Between sirens, people slamming doors, and my cats being extra loud, there has not been more than one whole minute of silence consecutively for like the entire day. So we're gonna hope I get through this video without losing my mind. Everybody, my name is Danny. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you my December wrap-up and January TBR. It's been a day trying to film this. So many sirens have gone by and loud cars and people slamming doors and my cats being loud and I'm just hoping to get through this video so that I can get it up for you guys. It's fine. We'll get through this. So, as always, I'm going to start with my wrap-up for the previous month, which is December. I have not a lot of physical books to show you guys. I did read a lot of ebooks and also unhauled a lot of books that I had read physically. Uh, my boyfriend has dubbed December uh, DNF December because I DNF'd so many books. It was kind of sad, but I also did read some really good books, so let's get into those. So the first book that I picked up was The Dante Club by Matthew Pearl, and I DNF'd it at page 8. <laughs> it was not for me, so you can check out my um, vlog of my readathon, the Nine Eyesathon video, to hear more about that because I was reading it for my readathon, and it was just, it was just a no for me. <laughs> Then I read Psyche in a Dress by Francesca Leah Block, and I gave this a 7 out of 10. I read this on recommendation from my friend Jessie, who had previously recommended me Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Tristan Matier, and I loved that book, so I trusted my friend's judgment. And I did enjoy this, it just wasn't totally for me, but it was still a pretty good read and very short. After that, I picked up The Nine Eyes of Lucian by Madeline Rue. This is the book that my readathon was based around, and I'm so happy to say I gave it a 10 out of 10. It was absolutely fantastic. Again, if you watch my vlog for my readathon, I talk a lot about this book and what I loved about it. Also, uh, Jen Wallace and I did a book chat about this, and it was a lot of fun, and we had a good conversation, so you can check that out if you're interested. But I absolutely adored this book. I thought it was fantastic, and I'm so happy to have read it. Then I read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This was the pick for the Nostalgia Train book club in December, and the day that I'm filming this is actually the day we're doing the live show for it, so I'm looking forward to doing that later on today. I gave this a 10 out of 10. I love Tolkien. The Hobbit is a childhood favorite of mine, and I'm very happy that I got to read this because it was a pleasant experience. I read it physically and then listened to the Andy Serkis audiobook along with it, and that was definitely the right move for me. It was so much fun. Then I read You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. I read it as an ebook, and I gave this a 5 out of 10. It was certainly something, just not something for me. Like, there's definitely an audience out there for this type of book. I just am not that audience. I still thought it was very interesting and had some things that I liked about it, just not a whole lot. After that, I picked up The Silver Tracks by Cornelia Funk. This is the fourth book in the Reckless series, and I gave this a 7 out of 10, which honestly hurts a little bit because Cornelia Funk is one of my favorite authors. This is one of my favorite series of all time. It's just that while I still adore the world and the characters and the writing, there was a very specific element to this book that is one of my least favorite things in books, so I just could not give this as high a rating as I wanted because it has something that I really don't like reading about, but I still am very much looking forward to book five whenever that comes out. It's supposedly the last book in the series, so like, that's pretty big. Then I picked up In a Cottage in a Wood by Cass Green and then unhauled it because I DNF'd it at page 63, which was about 20% in. It just was not for me. I didn't care about the main character by the time we got to 20% in, and I feel like a whole lot of that first chunk could have been cut and not changed the story at all. And then I read some reviews online and I saw other people were feeling similar to me and they had rated it low, so I'm like, you know what? I don't need to finish this book. So I didn't, and then I went and donated to a little free library, which I did with several books this month. 
After that, I read The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, and this is another book where I read it physically while I also listened to the audiobook, and that was a really good move too. There were two narrators, and I absolutely loved both of them. I thought they did a fantastic job, and I gave this book a 7 out of 10. It was really good, just not something I absolutely loved, and I actually, actually give the ah, if I could speak. I actually gave this to my mother because it definitely feels like something she would enjoy way more than I did, even though I did like it. I just didn't love it. Then for my third DNF of the month, I had tried to read Dealing in Dreams by Lilium Rivera and DNF'd it at page 78, which was almost a quarter of the way in. It was just not a good time. It didn't have anything that I wanted, so I'm like, I'm not gonna put myself through this, and I got rid of it. Then I picked up The Haunted by Daniel Vega, and I gave this a 6 out of 10. It wasn't great, but I am still slightly interested in reading the sequel, so I am hoping to get my hands on that. If I don't end up finding the sequel within like 6 or so months, it's not that big a deal. I'll probably unhaul this. Um, it's not like I'm aching to get the sequel, but it'd be cool if I could get it. I'd still, unless that sequel like completely wows me, I think I'm gonna unhaul this after I read book two, because it wasn't something that wowed me. It just, it was an okay time. Then we had a 10 out of 10 book, which was Jujutsu Kaisen volume 18. This was fantastic. I'm loving the arc that we're in and moving into, I think we'd like, we didn't like just start this arc, but like it's still in the early stages and I'm so excited for all the things to come. I'm upset that I have to wait several months for volume 19, but that's just the way it goes. This book was so, so good. And then finally, I am currently reading History of Wolves by Emily Fridland, I think is her name. I didn't think to pull it up. I'm reading it digitally, and I'm a little over halfway, I think, so I'm gonna finish by the end of the month. I'm just not finished by the time I'm filming this, and it's okay. I'm definitely liking it, but it's not at all what I expected, but um, it's it's a good book. It's not fantastic, but definitely not bad. So now that my wrap up is done, it is time to move into my TBR for January. And you may have noticed in the title and as I've been speaking that I have not been saying ski BR, and that is because ski BR is no more. At least for now. Maybe I'll bring it back in the future, who knows, but um, so, a little bit of backstory. In the beginning of December, I went to a board game convention and I bought this. It's called, it's an oracle deck, but it's called the Adventurous Tarot, but it's not a tarot deck. It's an oracle deck and it's inspired by D&D and probably should have opened it before filming. It's got these gorgeous cards and I'm absolutely obsessed. And so I was thinking, what if, I had a new uh, TBR game, and I came up with prompts for all the cards. There's 103 cards, and then I was like, okay, when do I want to start this TBR game? And I thought I would start it in June, because June 2021 is when I started Ski BR, and then I'm like, okay, I'll give Ski BR a whole two years, and then yesterday I was thinking, you know what? I think I want to start this with the new year. So that's what we're doing. New year, new TBR game. And I will probably make a video going more in depth about this TBR game sometime in the future. For now, I'll just uh, let you know a little bit of the basics about it. So the way this deck works is there's 103 cards, but there's like different sets. So like there's monster cards. So this is the four monstrosities. There's fiends, there's humanoids, elementals, like a whole bunch. Anything you could fight in D&D, basically. And then there's, if I can find one, like, this one's the companion that's, like, separate from the monster cards. The fighter is a class card. So basically, the class cards and things like the companion, or there's one that's the familiar, stuff like that, there are two of them. And then the different types of monsters and stuff, there's four of them, except for the generic adversary one. There's six, but like it's still similar. Um, and so for the class cards and the ones where there's two versions of the same card, what I did is I came up with two prompts for that. And so if I pull one of those cards, like say I pull the fighter, 
I can choose between the two prompts for that card, but if I pull the second one later, I have to use the other one. I can't use the same prompt twice. And then these kind of cards that are like one of four in that set, they, like each one has a theme. And like, for example, the, I think it's the Fiend is like different romance ones. And so the one, two, three, and four of Fiends are different romance subgenres that I have to pick from. It'll make more sense as we go along. I've pre-shuffled this deck, but I will do a little bit more uh, very bad shuffling because there's a lot of cards here. But yes, I mean, I want to take a second to clear my space in front of me so then I can pull the cards. All right, what I forgot to mention is how I'm going to decide how many cards to pull. So I have my D4 here. It's actually like a gigantic D4. It's so much bigger than all of my other ones. This was a Christmas gift from my friend. He got me a set of dice that uh, reminded him of my character that I play in the campaign he's DMing. Um, but yes, I have my D4 and I'm gonna roll it. If I get a one or a two, I have to roll again and add that. If on the second roll I get a one, I have to roll a third time and add it. So like on the first roll, it's a re-roll and add if I get a one or a two. On the second roll, it's only if I get a one. So I can get a minimum of three if I roll all ones, because the third roll is the last one no matter what. And a maximum of, I think, seven. Yeah, if I roll a two on the first roll, a one on the second roll, and a four on the third roll, that'd be seven. So I will be pulling anywhere from three to seven cards each month, and I'll help the, those cards will help me pick my TBR. <laughs> I've done a terrible job explaining this, but um, let's just roll to see how many cards I have to pull and then see what my prompts are. So I didn't think to get out my dice tray, so I'm gonna roll in the little tarot card box and just tell you what I get. So the first roll is a three. I don't know if you can see that the top number is a three. So I'm just gonna be pulling three cards. So let's do that. All right, here's my deck. And we're gonna shuffle it up a little bit more just because. And the first card is, ooh, the Cleric. The cleric is actually the class that I play most often in D&D. Of course, I'm not playing a Cleric now, I'm playing a Druid, but I often play Clerics. It's my favorite class. So this is the first one. The second card is the Bard. So it's another one where it's, a class card. Uh, can you tell that I didn't script this video? And the third card and last one is, ooh, the two of undead. I don't remember what prompt theme I did for the undead. Um, so we'll see. So I've decided the easiest way to do this is just to show you the cards, tell you what prompts I have to choose from, and then stop filming so I can decide what books I want to read for the prompts and then come back and tell you about the books. I apologize if you can hear my cat running around in the background. She is so hyper right now. Um, yeah, let's talk about prompts. So for the cleric, the two prompt options are the last book in a series or an author that I've read before. And that is because this is the class that I play the most often. It just seemed fitting. I don't know what I'm going to do for that. Probably going to do an author that I've read before. I have like a whole list of books that I want to get to because of all of the reading challenges and book clubs that I am taking part in in 2023. So I'm trying to like fit those in with my prompts. We'll see how I do and hope for the best. The Bard is actually the opposite card to the Cleric because as you can see there's a zero up here. The Bard is the first card in the whole deck and because it's the zero card I made the prompts either the first book in a series or a new to me author so it's the exact opposite prompt of the cleric so that's pretty fun we'll, we'll maybe play around with that a little bit and finally we have the two of undead so the undead cards are like ways I've acquired books or like I'm thinking of unacquiring is that a even a word getting rid of books um, the, the prompt for this one is a book that I bought secondhand. So I have a ton of books that I bought secondhand. So let's, uh, let's give me some time to think and figure out what the best choices for these prompts are. 
All right, I have scoured my bookshelves and found the books that I want to read. So I'm gonna go over the ones that fit the prompts I've just pulled. And then we're gonna go over other books that I wanna read that don't count for this TBR game. So first up for the cleric, I've decided to go with the prompt of an author that I've read before. And I'm going with The Ruins of Gorlan by John Flanagan. He's one of my favorite authors. Obviously I've read from him before. I am picking this book because of the kind of read-along that me and one of my best friends and Sophie are doing. We are going to be reading the whole series throughout the year, so like book one in January, book two in February, so on and so forth. And so this is book one, and this also covers the prompt for my own reading challenge that I'm doing, the Somber Honey reading challenge, which is to read a famous author's debut book. This was in fact John Flanagan's first book, so these two go together. Then for Bard, I am picking the prompt of a new to me author and I'm going with an ebook actually. I'm going with Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I've never read Marissa Meyer before, but I'm picking this because it is the pick for the J&R book club, which is a book club run by the YouTuber Jashi Karin and her friend Rachel. And this is the pick for January and I want to read it. So it fits this prompt. And finally, for the Two of Undead, the prompt is to read a book that you bought secondhand. I have so many of those. I have decided to go with Beowulf just because I'm in the mood for it. I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I want to read it. It's very short. It is kind of dense because it's Beowulf, but like, I still don't think it would take me that much time. And this also will help for, um, PBR Knockout, which is a challenge hosted by Melanie from the channel Completely Melanie. She has two prompts for each month to help read the books on your physical TBR, and one of the prompts is a book with only words on the cover, and this book only has words on the cover, so that covers that. And now to go over the many, many, many other books that I'm hoping to get to in January. So first up, for the buzzword challenge hosted by Books and Lala, the prompt is life or death, and so I'm hoping to get back into ZOM 100, which is a manga about the zombie apocalypse, and it counts for this prompt because the subtitle of the series is a bucket list of the dead, so it has the word dead, life or death, it works. The second TBR knockout prompt is a book with a mostly white cover, and for that I am going with The Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. I'm hoping to find a video on like YouTube or whatever of a performance to watch while I read along because that's how I like to take in Shakespeare books nowadays. It's, I think it's a really fun time. And I've never read The Taming of the Shrew before, but I have seen 10 Things I Hate About You, which is a really good movie inspired by this play. Then for the last two book clubs that I'm in, the Tome Travelers, I know that Anne told me a couple of the books that were like the choices for January and neither of the ones she told me were ones that I had access to, so it's not looking like I'm going to participate with them for January, but the Nostalgia Train Book Club, I really hope that Violet has announced this before this video goes up, otherwise I'm sorry that I'm spoiling it, but the uh, pick for January is The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket this is the first book in the Series 1 Fortune Events series. Uh, it's one of my favorite series of all time. I love it so much to the point where I have a tattoo on my body based on this. But um, I had said that when I read the series next, I want to binge all 13 books in a row. And so I was waiting to do that until I owned all of them. I've been buying them secondhand. And right now I'm still missing books 9, 10, 11, and 12. So four of them but they are available on Scrib, and I don't want to miss out on Violet's Book Club because it's always such a fun time, and I also love this book and want to read it along with other people, so I guess I will binge them and just read a couple of them digitally. But yeah, this is the last book that I'm hoping to get to in January, and by last book I mean last series because I want to read all of them. So that was a wild and chaotic video. I really hope I explained my new TBR game well enough, and if not, stay tuned for the future when I make a better explanation video. Um, I had a fun time. It's definitely gonna take some getting used to. It's much different than uh, uh, Ski BR was, but I still think it's really fun, and I love getting to use my new deck, so I'm happy with it. 
But that is all for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more content, and that way I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.